So a user sent me this file. Let's talk about it. So this user was trying to make a Glock. It looks like the empty didn't make it. So I'm just going to turn that off. And I'm just selecting the object and just looking at the, um, what we'll call the scene of the crime. And, you know, as far as troubleshooting goes, you want to press Q and bring back your ever scroll and look at your cutter. So this is our cutter that we're looking at. And the first thing I want you to take a note of is that, you know, statistics aren't showing. So you have to bring down this drop down to see them. This circle is 64 verts around. That's just a lot. Talk about a um, seriously thick knife. So if we look at this, this is our result and you have all these areas of contingency that have to be solved. And we have this area that's created here that, you know, in all honesty is kind of a rather flat linear surface, but there's all these loops in between. So, you know, first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of any, um, you know, erroneous geometry that isn't needed. And let's just minimize this area. This shape has all these loops in it. That's just not gonna work. So let's hit this thing with a decimate to clean it up. Let's control A, visual geometry to mesh. That's not gonna do the job either. So what we'll need to do is shift click decimate in order to add a unsubdiv version of decimate. So this one will unsubdivide at one iteration. Let's just apply it. And our circle now has 32 verts around. So I'm just gonna delete everything else. And so basically we removed all the perpendicular loops and then we simplified it and now I'm just re-extruding it. And let's just make sure the normals are right. For a moment, you can see what it looks like if you don't calculate the normals, you'll get all sorts of bevel nastiness, but let's just press shift in, recalculate these normals. And now we're looking at something a little more sane. So let's talk about why it's not working out. So the first thing is bevel didn't make it all the way across the uh, destination. Looks like this particular user was working an angle. So when it comes to making angle work, you wanna press Q, bring up bevel, and just kind of hold Alt and roll the wheel like petting a kitty just to help make that connection. And that's the first thing. And so you're still looking at this, you're like, it looks terrible, what are you gonna do about that? Well, that's where old buddy Weld comes in. So let's bring in Weld, and always roll Weld until it starts to eat the lunch of the bevel itself. And then I'll hold Shift and roll it up the stack once. And now we have something that's looking a little bit better. Of course, we'll need to lower our bevel and just kind of see what we're looking at. So there's an edge that's really close that we'll need to deal with. I'm just gonna press S and Y and just scale it just a little bit just to kind of equalize this area. Might even pull it out a little bit just to um, just clean it up. And now we're looking at something that's a lot better than the file that was sent to us to begin with. However, I'm kind of curious on what the unmodified state of this looks like. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm turning off all these, which displays the modifiers in edit mode. And we see that this particular user already has um, begun hard modeling some bevels in here, which um, in all honesty, aren't gonna be needed. So I am going to remove this because you start detailing too early while using the angle modifier, you're gonna start running into some issues. And that's definitely what's gonna happen here. So you definitely wanna keep things, um, you know, if you have um, angle, then you wanna keep your bevel, your, your final bevel, you know, the final bevel live and not try to model it in yourself too small because this will also catch it. So G, Y, looks like this guy's working on Y too. I mean, you shouldn't be working on Y, it's kind of weird, but whatever, you know, shout out to the, the Y axis gang. So let's press GZ and bring this up. And so now we have a part that's looking a lot more sane. I mean, there's so much that um, to be asked about how this part was even made. So, I mean, I would uh, normally end it here because we did solve the uh, prop. Actually, we could do a little bit better. Let's bring up our weld and see if we could just eat a little bit of lunch. And, you know, welds always an art and how much lunch you can eat before it starts looking janky like you see it right there. So sometimes it's easier to fandangle the boolean than to raise the amount of wedge that's happening. I mean, there's so many things tore up from the floor up with this particular model that would uh, need to be addressed, but 
we did get in aiming to solve this area. Of course, when you have flows that are going perpendicular like you see here, you do have to sometimes be a little creative. Like I am the type of person who will uh, perform cuts using knife to make things a little bit more advantageous to the work that I'm trying to do. So, you know, this isn't the best idea, but sometimes you want to um, kind of simplify what's being evaluated by these modifiers because, you know, they're just modifiers, you know, they're not omniscient. So they can't account for every case. So it does require a little bit of flexibility. In fact, right there, we could uh, probably lower our weld and get something reasonable. So, I mean, when you're working non-destructively, it's always gonna be the stance of you battling with modifiers. But talking about this part, this thing is just crazy in the way that it was modeled. I mean, the more geometry simplified from it, the better off that it is. Because, I mean, if you were making the uh, next component of this, you would um, shift D or, uh, you know, if it was me, I would actually use curve extract and just extract the piece off and then begin working that. But, you know, let's talk about this handle for a second. So, you know, this guy was obviously following a reference. So let's just try to make the shape just real quick and just discuss, uh, you know, order of operations. Um, my goal for this iteration of hops is to uh, kind of approach things for more of a troubleshooting sense than creation you know with the last iteration i attempted to uh, convey how to use hops through um, an eight hour long video explaining entirely how to use it so that was fine um, but for each version i do want to try something different so for this one um, i might handle it from a more troubleshooting aligned angle so here we are just building the very simple shape and i'm just using this guy's uh, model as reference and we could um, put a loop all the way across, but I'm just actually going to grab the edge and subdivide it because also lately I've been, um, you know, bringing things in and then holding alt to slide them out on hypothetical extended edges lately. I find it to be a uh, quite nice filling and definitely recommend everybody give it a try. So here we are with our simple shape. I mean, this is the part that really made me wonder what was going on. I'm not going to get into it. This guy might know more about guns to me. I know nothing about guns. So, you know, we'll put a couple of points in here, just even things out. And so the next thing from here is we want to clean the mesh because all these edges that are uh, connecting are going to be getting in our way. And so with this area, I would bevel it like so. In fact, let's say we were going for... Um, whatever he was going for here. But I would just keep beveling until I got it just right. But something like that would be sufficient. And then we want to bevel this one, but we want to give it, um, you know, not a whole lot of geometry, maybe three. And then for this one, we'll also bevel it and we'll just roll it out and just get it nice and even. Even though we're touching that dot on the other side, we can just go in and dissolve that, dissolve that. And here we are just making this shape. So we'll do the same thing here. Control shift B bevel point. And I'm just going to ignore that part. And I just, I don't know. seems so weird. I'd have to see the ref to believe that, but, uh, you know, I look at a lot of Glocks too. I mean, as a modeler, not as a, um, gun person. So let's bring this out and we will just solidify we'll press two push it out both ways, control A, visual geometry to mesh. And so this is what we're looking at so far. And we'll just sharpen it just to uh, get our shading right. And you see that he has this curve going all the way across the front. Um, you know, it'd be fun is just grab these two pieces, curve extract. I'm thinking about making curve extract, not keep the modifiers of the previous state. However, it is kind of important to keep it. So maybe on an F9. You know, can't be making such rash decisions, but we'll just grab these two F. Um, I always use the hotkey of shift tilde for select boundary loop, which I have mapped by right clicking. And so I'll just select that and just, you know, fill it in with N, you know, calculate them normals. And all I did was just cut that piece off and make it into a piece I can use on this side. 
and we just want to bring that in. Let's join them together with Control J. And I'm just going to select an edit mode and press Control and Numpad minus to perform an edit mode difference Boolean operation. So uh, kind of like if I did object mode, except I know in edit mode, it will just apply and be done. We'll also symmetrize this object to get it kind of congruent. And, you know, like I said, we're just following the um, reference provided. And we see that, you know, there were some really interesting transformations he was aiming to take on with this thing. So me personally, uh, sometimes you gotta know when to slice them too. Like, I mean, I would not mind slicing it off like so. And then just um, grabbing edge to edge and then just rolling it in. Of course, you wanna give it about, you know, three, at least four more loops, um, just because if you're gonna be using an angle later, you probably wanna be planning for it. So now this side has been dealt with in a um, kind of methodical fluid fashion. And so we can do it the same with this side. I mean, I think I spent a lot of time thinking about the order of operations whenever it comes to modeling and how, you know, just different choices you can make affects your ability to get to the finish line. I'm gonna bring this in and we're just gonna symmetrize it just so, you know, I've been making some that are just a little bit wider than normal and we just wanna make sure that this fits. Another thing is that sometimes I will um, unmark things in edit mode and then, you know, sharpen it in object mode. You know, you can also hover over sharpen and you can see that uh, control shift will recalculate. So I always use that to uh, recalculate my sharp markings whenever I do a little bit of modeling, just in case I need some control. And we could just bring this in and we'll just mirror it across this like so. And this is what we're looking at so far. So, you know, one of the things I've been experimenting lately, and also I've been trying to <laughs> uh, tell Howard about it, is um, how I've been beveling Booleans. And, you know, your first question is probably like, hey, why would you do that? But, you know, sometimes it's just tough to deal with Booleans and bevels and all that stuff. And so sometimes getting a little creative can go a long ways. I mean, you know, Blender be Blender. I try to explain Blender to people. And in the end, you know, Blender is just a very strange program. It requires a different mindset. You know, you wouldn't say that it's missing features. You would just say uh, the solutions are just different than what you're used to experiencing. You think you would be able to go about things such a linear pattern when sometimes you have to pull a trick out of your hat just to uh, make it to the end of the day. So let's um, bring this guy's other piece back, this one. I don't know why this thing's looking like a slice now. I messed that guy's thing up, but anyways, we're um, just having some fun here. Video's been long over. It was, it was a story about weld, by the way. So let's perform a difference, and this is what we're looking at. We're in the same situation as that previous guy, except we have some points that are so near to a resolution. Let's uh, put a weld on it. And sometimes you can roll, but rolling is a little heavy handed. So a little manual movement to go along with rolling will really help you uh, get good control of your weld. So now we can uh, put a bevel on top of it. And of course the bevel is always gonna be limited by the geometry underneath because no matter how many times I say it, you know, Blender is not CAD. Uh, surfaces and Blender are just such a joke that they're not even worth talking about. I mean, I think you can make boats or something with them, but other than that, um, surfaces is just a, um, I don't know. If I ever cornered Ton in a restroom, it's the only thing I would talk to him about. Be like, but moy, man. But anyways, continuing on. I'm just giving a little bit of supportive geometry to these areas. It'll assist with shading and stuff like that. Um, I could also start uh, darting in, into this thing, but it may not be necessary. I mean, I could cut like right there and that should give us a, a very nice cut just to um, assist. I don't know. I always experiment with booleans and bevels and whenever you have all these mods set up, sometimes you can find that there's some interesting things you can do that, you know, just aren't usual, but are possible. You know, Blender always impresses me with um, 
how just a little bit of extra time and um, practicing it can um, give you so much as far as uh, rewarding you in skill. Uh, so this guy also had a trigger. You know, we could just bring it over. And when it comes to aligning two objects, right, I just moved it over so lazily, but I could select both of them and choose um, mesh tools, reset axis, and we want to reset this on the Y, which will reset object B to object A. And here we are looking at kind of, um, I'm sorry I did your model so bad. Let's see if I can, um, what did I do to your model? Now, now I'm curious in the mystery of what did I do to this guy's model? So this is another level of troubleshooting, right? We could scroll through our stack, but our stack just shows a boolean happening and then a bevel happening. So we want the boolean, but not the bevel. And we're in local mode, so I know that no shapes are gonna pop up because of a certain bug. And let's just, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll bring some sanity back to this. If anything, I could just load up the original file and that is what I'm gonna do. No, no, let's solve this mystery, sorry. Uh, we'll select all, shift tilde, select all. Shift in. And really gotta come out of local mode for this. We should be getting that bug fixed very soon, actually. And this is definitely a difference. We change it over to exact, we're good to go. However, we shouldn't have to use exact just to perform such a cut. And then we turn bevel back on and we're back to where we started, where we had a very minimal bevel. And we also see that we need a little bit of weld just to make it to the end of the day. So always roll it till it uh, eats its lunch and then voila, we're good to go. So I could actually save this as a, um, you know, control shift S, um, always put an underscore one with this stuff and I'll just send this back to the guy. But anyways, we'll wrap that up. Just a little bit of um, hard ops troubleshooting and um, modeling assistance with um, MX2. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.